Hello, in this video I'll be going through how you can make the detailed aspects of your base meshes using Metaballs. This is all part of a sculpting series that I'm doing at the moment, and you can find more courses like this on gabbit.co.uk, where all the courses are free. If you have any questions, you can put them in the comments, or you can get across to the Discord server and ask me there. Links in the description. For this series I'll be using Blender 2.8, but all the different things that I'm using are exactly the same in Blender 2.79, they're just in different locations, and I'll try to point that out as I go along. So in the previous episode I talked about the skin modifier, and whilst using the skin modifier is a really great tool for big meshes such as bodies, and the bigger shapes of that body like arms, legs and torsos, it really seems to fail when it comes to the more detailed areas like hands for example. So if I go to scale up these vertices with Control A to make them nice and big, and then I go back to solid mode with Z on my keyboard and the Pi menu, just shifting to the right, you can see that it's created this dreadful mess here. And you can go in and you can start moving points around to try and sort out that mess, but it's a bit random and tricky. So what I prefer to do is use Metaballs. So I'll delete that, and I will press Shift A for the Add menu, and there is Metaballs, and I tend to use the balls. I don't really use the other ones because I find I just use lots of balls to make up my shapes. I'll explain what I mean, so I'll add a ball here. Now when you first bring it in, you've got your Metaball object data down here. If I click on that, in 2.7 it's across the top here, but if I click on that and reduce the resolution view, that's making it more detailed. So in this case we're not too worried about the detail, we can bring it fairly low, something like 0.3, and that will be great. I'll go to top view with 7 on my numpad, and shift D to duplicate. So I'll pull one out for the knuckle, I'll make that slightly smaller, another one out for the next knuckle, and the last one out with shift D for the very end of the finger. Now you can see as I make this smaller it sort of detaches itself, that's fine because we can just press shift D and fill that in with another metaball. So I'm just going to go along, shift D, and scale that one down so you can sort of see the knuckles, shift D, and scale that one down, and there we go, and I'll just adjust the shape from the side view with three on my numpad, and there we have a very basic finger. So in order to start sculpting on this finger, I need to convert it to a mesh. So if I select all my metaballs, which is much easier in 2.8, I just click and drag over the lot of them with left click, and in 2.79 you would press Alt-C and convert to mesh from curve or something like that. In 2.8 it's in the object menu, down to convert to mesh from curve. Now we have our mesh ready, I can go to the sculpting tab up here, there it is, and I'm ready to pull this around into its shape. First of all I'm going to tick Dine Topo. Again Dine Topo destroys your topology but it's the most free for sculpting. And let's just go to the parameters here. At this stage, which is fairly early and I'm just blocking out shapes for the base mesh, I like to use instead of relative detail, which is dependent on how close you are to your model and it will add more detail the closer you go in, which can be very useful, but in this case I prefer constant detail, then I know exactly how much detail I'm adding. I'll put the resolution up to 10, so now when I add mesh it's a good amount of detail but not too much. So now I can start pulling my shape around with the snake hook tool make my brush nice and big, and just get the basic shapes. It's best to go to side view and front view for these things, then you know you're adding it nice and evenly, and also, because I added my metaballs in top view, I know that the edit point is in the middle, and I can happily sculpt on one side and it will affect the other. So I can slowly create a sort of finger shape. This bit will be indented into the rest of the hand, which in a moment I will create using another metaball and then boolean the two together. Once you've got a basic shape with the grab tool, you can then go to usually the crease tool I find. I'll smooth it down a bit and then start using the crease tool in areas like this and just slowly add some detail to my model. Okay, so there's a very basic finger there. There's no need to go too detailed because we'll be copying this a few times, booling it, and then tidying up at the end. But if you get to about this stage, that's probably a good point. And the more detail you go, the easier it is later on when you repeat it, you don't have to keep doing it several times. But in some ways I like to get to a basic stage, then I can add differences in the different things that I duplicate. Okay, so this point, 
I'll go back over to modeling mode and to object mode just over here. Now my pivot point's in a good place, but if you wanted to change that, then shift right click to move your 3D cursor. Let's say I wanted it there. And then under the object panel, we have set origin, origin to 3D cursor. Had to do that twice for some reason, but that's some of the glitches in Blender at the moment. Nothing really to worry about. Okay, so now if I go to top view, then I can duplicate this, shift D to duplicate. In fact, I'll go this way. Then I can just look at my hand that's on the keyboard at the moment. Shift D to duplicate. It's always good to have a reference. Shift D to duplicate. And I'll scale some of these down and rotate them out. That's why I wanted the object origin there, so that when I'm rotating, they will rotate by this point. And also when I scale, they'll scale by that point. So I'll rotate them by the x-axis here, just to pull them down a bit. And that's great. Now back to top view with seven on the numpad and I'll change my 3D cursor to here with shift right click and shift A and I'll add a meta ball and just a ball again scale it up move it into position so G to grab and look at it from this side I can scale my meta ball with S then Z back to top view move it into position make sure it's overlapping my fingers shift D to duplicate just to give it some shape there I'll scale that down a touch, but not in the Z axis. So Shift Z to take out the Z axis when I'm scaling. Let's grab these two, Shift D, duplicate them, scale them in the X axis to somewhere around there. Grab this one, pull it out for my thumb, scale it down, and just keep duplicating until you're happy with the shape. Now I can grab one of my fingers, Shift D, rotate that, pull it right into the hand because it's only going to be the end point that I need. So these two here in a sense. And this wants to be a lot thicker. So scale shift XX I think. No, shift YY will not scale in the normals of the object. So because I've rotated it, it's the local view when you double press your axes. So shift Y and Y again will constrain it to the local X and Z axis so it got fatter. It's worth spending a bit of time on this bit because it can be quite awkward doing this at a later date, but not impossible. So there we've got our basic shape now. I can grab all my metaballs. And again, going up to object, convert to mesh from curve. Now I've obviously selected something else, so it's not giving me that option. I need to make sure just my metaballs are selected. So let's go up to here and select them in my collection. Hopefully now I can go to Object, Convert To, and there is Mesh from Curve. Now I'm ready for a Boolean. Normally I'd use Ball Tools in Blender 2.79. Blender 2.8 hasn't got that yet, but when it does, it'll be under Edit User Preferences, Add-ons. If you type in Ball, you'll find Ball Tools, and that makes this part of the process much easier. So for the moment, I click on my main mesh. It doesn't matter which one you click on so much at the moment. Over to the Modifiers with the spanner here, or the wrench if you're American. Add modifier, boolean. I select my object with this little pipette here, or picker, as some people might call it. Select my object. At first, it looks like it's doing something odd because it's under intersection, and we just need to click union. And you can see it's added the two together, and that's fine, and press apply. Now what you will find, it looks a bit glitchy at the moment. That's because the old one is just underneath it. So it keeps a copy of the old one. So now we just need to go around doing that Boolean operation on the other ones. Now occasionally, just like there, it said fail to set value. It's a strange one with the Boolean operation. Occasionally that does that. Usually if you just move it really slightly, so if I press G to grab and move it slightly, hopefully it will work now. Okay, so now we've got our one shape, which is looking okay. I can hide the other ones, H to hide, or I could delete them. Sometimes it's nice to have a backup. And now I can sculpt on this hand, and when I'm finished, I can then join it to my base mesh. It's a good idea, in fact, to save the joining until quite late on in the sculpting process. So add a fair bit of detail to this hand and your base mesh, which might be a person. Then you can actually pose it into position and pose the fingers and things 
then join it to your main mesh and it will look great. You can even do this at this beginning stages as well with the fingers. You can do the fingers and hands as separate objects, put them into position to pose them and then join them together afterwards. And as you become more experienced, you'll realize what objects you want to do that with and the best time to do that. So at this point, I can go into sculpt mode and start adding some detail. Make sure, of course, you have Dine Topo turned on, which I'd forgotten about then. Now I've made a mistake. I should have rotated this thumb around a little. So it's not going to look particularly good because I was rushing. And you can see the difficulty you get when you try and do this later on with the grab tool. Also at this point, I'd forgotten as well that symmetry is still on and it's probably symmetrizing to this other side here, causing quite a mess. So make sure that's turned off. So once you're ready to sculpt, it's a good idea to use the grab tool to just push the mesh into shape and get the overall look. You'll have to use the draw brush to smooth out the joins between the objects that you've booleaned. But remember to get the overall detail before going into the minor details. So I take a bit of time getting the shape right and then I start working on the minor details. Okay, so hopefully you can see how I can create a detailed part of my base mesh from Metaballs. I find the skin modifier is a good start for the bigger pieces and the Metaballs for the more detailed and then I combine them all with a boolean operation. Later episodes of the series hopefully will go into things like clothing and armour and other sort of accessories. But for now hopefully that will give you enough to create fairly detailed sculpts on your own. So thanks for watching and I hope that helps.